all right okay good morning guys um all right so we'll go through this is the advanced webinar um we've been doing it this week in or last week as well in discord uh and trying this out and uh offering it for free for everybody uh for the net last couple of weeks just uh, uh as we test things in here uh and see how it goes uh and uh, and figure out uh you know how we're going to uh, move forward with this uh anyway we've seen some great stuff in in these webinars uh and we'll jump in here uh just a second uh but uh the just back up for a minute here and describe what's going on in the uh education uh, and uh, what you get when you subscribe to Bookmap Global Plus, uh, the education is a part of it. All right, what you get is access to the educational course that's online, and then three days a week we'll do this a live forward-looking analysis, like we're going to be doing today, uh, for about an hour, maybe uh, maybe a bit more, and uh, go through the um, uh, order flow in detail, uh, how to read it, uh, and it's not hindsight; it'll be forward-looking. So. Uh, so you can apply what you learn from that educational course directly in the live market. Uh, learn to read order flow. So we'll read the current market and give insight to where we think price is going to move next. Uh, and then uh, we will go through some different trading strategies. We will go through trade management, but that's not the goal. The goal is uh, how to um, integrate order flow within your trading. Then we have uh, live trading with JTrader, a stocks trader, on Wednesday. He'll be here tomorrow. Uh, and then on Thursday, we have Scott Pulsini, and he will also be here this week, uh, Thursday morning at 10 a.m. East Coast time. Uh, and uh, they'll take positions, uh, and it will be in demo. Uh, so the idea here is you got the course, you have the live analysis, learn how to read it, go through many different trading strategies, then get into very specific trading strategies from two different professional traders and apply what you've learned or take something away uh, from you know uh, what they're offering, their strategies, their way of managing uh, trades and seeing the order flow. All right, so that's the concept. Let's go through some disclosures and then jump in. Uh, general disclosure, all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. The risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right, so let's jump in uh, and... Uh, uh, take a look we don't have much data this week uh, so uh, with the fundamentals uh, it's all geopolitical uh, and uh, it's all about COVID it's all about uh, you know many different things uh, happening around the globe uh, but uh, no economic releases anything scheduled uh, that's uh, of you know vital importance and this is typically a slow week however what did we do yesterday went to all-time highs all right so actually um, We'll zoom out. We're looking at S&P here. Uh, let me know if you want to look at something else. Um, I'm happy to go through it. Uh, but um, uh, the, um, uh, you know, we can look at some stocks. We can look at different um, cryptocurrencies. We can also look at different futures markets. Most people want to look at the S&P. So that's why we look at the S&P. Uh, so the, um, uh, and I want to look at the bigger picture here. Uh, on this look at this move up uh, just shy of 48,000 here so uh, we'll take a bigger step back uh, and take a look at let's see um, <laughs> hold on a minute here um, yeah here we go bigger picture okay uh, the daily chart over here uh, let's start with that and uh, you know all-time highs breached and closed higher yesterday Okay, pretty significant, uh, and uh, uh, I've been pounding on the table about this. I, I just think it's a pretty amazing thing to check out. Um, when uh, we saw on last Monday the move down below here, just below this little swing here, and just the massive amount of uh, iceberg buying uh, down here, hidden orders, uh, as well as the massive amount of liquidity getting filled down in here. Uh, and uh, this has led to one, two, three, four, five days rally. Okay, well, even that day, maybe six days, because that that day, the the after that event, it it rallied, it rallied hard. Um, I just want to give an insight here about the higher time frame and just how important it is to understand it. And when you see things like that, uh, uh, this gives you a real huge edge. 
I mean, just think about the move here. Uh, it's pretty amazing. It was uh, 420, uh, 45, uh, 20, and, and we're just up at like 48, right? Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, that's uh, uh, 200, 280 points uh, so far, or a little less, two, 270, whatever, doesn't, doesn't matter. That's pretty amazing. Uh, and look at this, look at this daily chart. All that hacking away in these little days in here, um, and uh, just a massive move in here. You can use the order flow on these time frames. Okay, when you see things, when we see events like this, um, we're looking for a big event, a, a big move, right? Uh, and um, uh, some great stuff. All right, so we're going to look at smaller time frames here uh, in Bookmap, but uh, uh, just understanding those those uh, higher time frames is really really key. Actually, let's go back and uh, take a look at the the hourly chart and also the 15 minute chart here. Uh, that's what we're looking at uh, in the in the candlesticks. Uh, here's uh, uh, the the close uh, yesterday that doesn't look right um, yeah boy I don't it's kind of weird I don't know if I really trust my um, rhythmic uh, chart here uh, you know I th th this was looks like this was the close here um, it actually does look like it closed back into the range but not according to this this candle here um, oh I'm sorry this might have been this was I'm sorry that that was the 21st okay so here we are on the um, let's, let's just look back a little bit less here okay so 21st and this is the uh, 26th here right or 28th yeah okay so yeah here here uh, here here we are uh, today uh, and um, uh, the, the move up into this uh, 4786 pretty strong move pretty strong on this so there is still a lot of buying pressure in here uh, and uh, we see some pullbacks now on the 15 minute chart and some back and forth in here Okay, but uh, I mean, there's no question about the the, the momentum here to the upside, All right? It's gonna we're gonna start to see some slowing down. It looks like in here, uh, but uh, uh, and you can see some 15 minute candles and a little bit of back and forth wicks on both sides. Uh, we can cover what this means in here uh, on the higher time frame. Uh, this little see this little uh, red candle here, All right? So this was strong move, a little bit of a pullback. And then again, st strong move here. Now this is the 9:30 cash open here. So this is yesterday. This is today here, uh, and uh, we're looking at the cash session here, 9:30 to uh, uh, 4:15 uh, East Coast time. So uh, today, pretty choppy, uh, as you guys can see. But uh, you know, we come, we came from this very, very strong move here. Uh, what I want to cover is like this little area in here and the pullback to it, and then the continuation. Right, and then uh, wicks up here, not breaking the uh, high yet, and uh, back and forth in here. Why I'm covering this little area in here is because if we take a look at um, that same order flow phenomena, uh, it's similar to something like this right here. Okay, a little bit of a kind of a pullback, uh, and then uh, continuation here, right, and an acceptance above that area. So for for instance. Uh, we can take a look here. This is where this broke out, and look where it's retesting. Okay, this is the market structure we're looking at here. Okay, it's very similar on the candlestick chart. Uh, the candlestick chart is just not showing you much more uh, than that. Uh, you're trying to read the wicks, you're trying to read the pressure in here, etc., and you're just kind of guessing at it. Uh, that's when you can go into Bookmap and we can get into the specifics. Uh, and start to understand what's going on in here. So let's let's start jumping in here. So we know it's kind of back and forth right now for today. Uh, we know we came out of you know we're up at all-time highs, uh, and uh, and momentum is still to the upside. Okay, so some good stuff in there. Uh, and um, uh, yeah, let's um, uh, jump in a little bit deeper here. All right. So what do we see now? All right. So well, we just marked up our our structure. Uh, and uh, you can see, uh, like we were covering yesterday, okay, we saw the continuation here. Uh, area of high liquidity here, 
Some of it stayed in here, and we're just going to uh, readjust this. Uh, hold on. Okay, there we go. Uh, readjust this here, and here's why. Okay, so um, you can see that uh, the high liquidity in here, okay, trade in, and, and some of it pulled. It pulled here, as you guys can see, uh, just after um, uh, or around 3.30 or so. Uh, but some of it stayed in, and we trade into it, and through it okay I would be looking for 4800 at this point to trade it never did in the overnight session but this starts to mark up another structure you can see some of the pullbacks to it okay almost um, uh, to it, it, it the, the structure is just a little bit higher here uh, and then the back and forth within here okay so understanding these areas of liquidity on higher time frame really starts to map out your day Okay, and understand structure. Now, if you're a volume profile uh, trader, great. If you're a FIBS trader or you're looking at patterns, great. Uh, it, just whatever it is, start to look at the order flow in here to confirm those patterns. All right, so w we can overlay a candlestick chart and confirm that that pattern. Uh, if, if that's the kind of trader that you are, you, you'd look for volume and the order book to um, uh, aid you uh, in, in that confirmation. Okay, so for right now, for example, looking at profile, uh, well, we have two different, we have a double distribution today. Okay, most of it traded here, okay, in this little area right here. This is the point of control. All right, so and we're just at it right now. We're just below it, actually. Okay, now, uh, we can start to look at some of this market structure in here. Okay, it's really back and forth in here. Uh, but let's take a look at this. Okay, so we'll zoom in a little bit closer here. Uh, and start to understand what's going on. So if we get lots of sellers in here, okay, they're going to move it away from point of control, right? And where are they, where are we looking for them to go uh, and, and test? Looking for 47.80. Okay, we're looking for 47, uh, uh, 77 and a half or so down here. That's the most in the order book right now. It's that's why it's red down here. Uh, so uh, we we can see. Uh, this is where the buyers are. If sellers want to meet the buyers, this is where they got to go. Okay, the majority of them. Uh, and uh, we can start to match up some of these areas here as well with the market structure. Okay, so this will confirm the market structure for you. So here is where we broke out. And I don't know what this was here. Uh, someone, someone will know. It's uh, likely some news or some sort of pop in here. Um, and uh, it, it set the tone for the rest of the session so far. Okay, and there are buyers down here, okay, right at where it broke out from, supporting it here. Okay, there's more demand down here uh, at 4780 and just below it too. That gives us also a little bit of insight. How is this liquidity behaving in here? Okay, they're below it, right? This 4780. We know that's the critical area is 4780. Okay, and they're below it with more liquidity. So if they really wanted to be buyers in this auction, wouldn't they be front running it in here? Wouldn't they want to be uh, get filled before this area if they really want to be buyers? So we can just read these two lines of liquidity in here or areas of high liquidity and start to uh, extrapolate meaning from it in the auction process here. Okay, so uh, yeah, they want to be buyers here. They, they may pull when price comes down here. Uh, but uh, this uh, 77 level here, uh, they want to be buyers below that area so they're looking for maybe a, a stop run into uh, or through this 4780 here people say like okay I'm out and larger players are on the other side saying like I'm in uh, and I'll, I'll be a buyer down here all right so again we're, we're, we're we, we started off as the, at the daily chart looked at the hourly looked at the 15 minute and we're starting to kind of assess some of the market structure now in the order flow. So here's our scenario that we're looking for. Big sellers in here coming in. If they're going to move it away from point of control, this is the kind of selling we need to see. Now we need to see movement that follows with it. Okay, we're looking for movement here. So just because we got the big sellers here, uh, uh, that that's a the step one here. Now we need to see the movement. So uh, we're looking for a kind of a, a retest down here. We should get more sellers 
if we do we should get the move down into 4780 here yeah, let's see if they can do it. Okay, we're kind of on the on the edge here. Uh, it's it might be a false breakdown. Okay, but yeah, I I like the selling down here. I just want to see them start to move it away uh, from that area now. Okay, so what happens in some of these areas down here? And and you can see we don't really know yet. We're looking, we're watching, we're waiting. Here they come. Okay, they should be able to move this now. A little bit of a stop run there and, and in here. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're looking for the sellers to move it away into these lower levels here. All right, we have the order book on our side here. See when the order book came in uh, on the offer? Right, see how they're pulling down here at 82? Okay, so we're looking for the follow through. Okay, so we got the follow through down to 81, a little bit of a uh, re responsive buy, or I, I would say this is, uh, Sam had the question uh, yesterday about, you know, this kind of move in here. Are these new buyers coming in? Maybe, uh, but uh, likely, uh, you know, maybe a quick move and some some profit taking. Okay, but, uh, the, you know, we, we, we're looking to see um, uh, the type of uh, activity in here. Uh, and uh, yeah, there, this looks like some new new buying in here uh, potentially. We see some icebergs in here, so yeah, we know that, right? Right in here, there's just, just 38 icebergs, but uh, we can see it. Okay, but they're selling. They're selling. Okay, they're not buying. Okay, we see the stop run here. Uh, so uh, uh, and let's take a look at the volume in here. It's not bad. You can see it in the bars. You can see it in the dots. Uh, on the buy side. So we can start to look at this. First, we thought this is probably profit taking. Is this new buying? Eh, I'm not quite sure yet. Starting to look like it now though. Okay, starting to look much much more like not a, vol a low volume um, uh, pullback now. We're, we're actually above these guys here. So this is now a false breakdown. Okay, and this is where a lot of people can get trapped uh, and uh, and stopped out on the other side here. Right. So uh, uh, anyway, uh, uh, wait, let's let's go over ways to consider management, trade management within some of these moves, because we're looking for the breakdown. We're looking for this 4780. It came pretty close, uh, came down one point away, uh, four ticks away or so, or maybe even less. Let's take a look. Yeah, so uh, uh, three ticks away uh, from our 4780 uh, area here. Uh, so. Uh, ways to consider uh, managing your trades in here go with the whole the um, we're looking for this action to take place we didn't know this action would okay? uh, if once they start to get committed here on the sell side we're looking for the follow-through right uh, we got down to uh, this area only uh, and then uh, we got responsive buyers coming back in trading it right back to point of control here and that's what's going on in here. They're trading it right back into value here. Now I'm curious to see if we get sellers again now. Okay, so the buyers had their fun. Uh, they're able to move it back to a point of control here. Uh, and uh, we'll see. Maybe we get buyers trying to move it away from point of control. So we'd be looking for big green dots in here to, to pull it away from that area. And it's not bad. It's not bad so far. We're already above it. Okay, this uh, 47... Uh, 87 area here and uh, let's see if uh, there's maybe a bit more a bit more buying there's some exhaustion there okay let's see we should get a little bit of selling in here I'd be looking for it and then I'd be looking for a move maybe back down to 86 here buyers supporting it here so anyway trade management wise uh, you know we look for this take take some profit uh, I, I like to front run uh, these moves here because this was higher probability that this would play out uh, just by the order flow in here okay. don't get caught up in this uh, because uh, we, we've got the move to the downside we're looking for the follow-through great we got some uh, at, at worst, uh, you would get stopped out at break even uh, on this trade. 
Okay, ways to consider the management in here uh, because um, the uh, uh, this should have continued. Okay, we'd be looking for it to continue down into this liquidity down here, and it didn't. All right, so uh, uh, you know, uh, if it does not do what we're looking for, take take the stop loss at break even. Look for the next opportunity. The next opportunity might be uh, setting up right now. Okay, we're looking for exhaustion up here. We're looking for sellers to come in here. Likely, we we need to see the sellers right around here, around this 87 level. Okay, if we get our sellers in here, we should get a move right back down into, well, we said 86 to begin with. It came to 86 and a half here. I'd be looking for it to come down to 85 here okay, to test where this broke out from, Okay, right here. Same idea, same concepts we were looking at in the higher time frame. All right, let's zoom in and let's take a look here. Okay, a little bit on the bid here, so uh, that's we don't want to see that. If that's the scenario we're looking for, we do get some exhaustion here. We're starting to get some sellers here. They're starting to pull here. Okay, so let's see if we can get uh, a little bit more selling down here. Okay, right around 87, and then we should get our move into 85. There they go. A little bit more. Looking for 85 here. All right, now this is kind of a, a critical in here because this is the most traded level, right? To move, to remove away from or move away from that most traded level, we really need to see uh, lots lots of selling. Okay, same idea as previously down in here, and we we did get it uh, to a certain point. And then uh, reading this buying in here, like, I mean, you can even read it in the in the dots. You can read it in. Um, uh, you know, uh, the, the bars, uh, this was not a lot of buying that was able to move price right back up into point of control. And, and now you can see uh, we're back up uh, where we kind of dropped from here. Uh, okay, uh, Gore, you want to look at, uh, um, at gold? Does absorption indicator uh, indicate exhaustion? No. Um, so uh, let's let's go through that. Um, so Alan, I know. Thanks thanks for asking this in here. Uh, we we, uh, we covered this. Um, all right. I said <laughs> you asked me uh, offline. Um, so uh, uh, let's cover it in here. Uh, and we're looking at stops and icebergs right now on the chart. Uh, but uh, let's go through the uh, sweeps and absorption indicator. So let me turn off the um, on chart uh, uh, indicator for uh, icebergs and stops and absorption and sweeps. We'll start with um, uh, absorption because that's the question here. All right. God, I, I love these programmers that these guys are doing such nice work. Uh, they're putting in this uh, kind of uh, deviation standard deviation uh, so we're, we're looking at kind of um, more important um, uh, you know absorption in here now absorption is not showing exhaustion at all at all it has nothing to do with it uh, in fact let me let me um, let me take a step back here and we'll cover it here we'll take this off of the chart exhaustion is the lack of trading okay it has nothing to do with the order book um, and so, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's all about the aggressor. So like this little point up here is some exhaustion. Okay, let's find a better example on a higher time frame. Uh, it just means there is no trading. Uh, this, this isn't bad in here. Okay. So, uh, it, we, we look at this little move up in here and then up to this point here, just above the swing, you know, a couple ticks above it, there is no trading. Okay. No, no one, no transactions right here uh, at this area. There's, there's no more buyers, right? They're not interested. Uh, no one, no one wants to to take this a, a tick higher here. Uh, so we go back and forth in here, and this is where you can start to read uh, and the little changes in the in the order flow. Uh, although buying is pretty good in here, we're we're starting to trend up on this in this kind of micro uh, time frame here, uh, and uh, you can see the sideways action in here. 
and they're buying uh, at the top top range here they stop buying here we see a little bit of selling in here a uh, little bit more uh, action down here no buying here okay see how there's no buying in here so we have exhaustion a lack of buying exhaustion again here we can't even make a higher high and we get no transactions on these retests in here okay these little retests in here on the with the uh, best offer we rotate lower and we get some sellers okay and that's when the sellers usually will take it down uh, and trade into lower levels here okay, as you can see they did uh, they ran into uh, uh, some buyers here uh, but here here the retest back up and up again lack of buying lack of buying okay it has nothing to do with the heat map all right so the heat map you it's it's a mute point it's just about the aggressor there's no buying up at these points here all right so uh, now this is true there's no selling down here either so it's just really range bound in here but once you start to put together like uh, uh, you know they can't make a higher high uh, and you get exhaustion and you're getting selling down in some of these areas that's when you're looking for these moves to unfold okay now don't I, I I would recommend um, that uh, uh, to not put this together as some sort of equation, uh, saying like okay I'm looking for this this and this and that and then it should move, All right? Understand the the concept. Okay, once you understand the story and the concept here, it'll be much easier to look for the steps of what you're looking for. The concept is this: in this range bound uh, activity here, we have you know uh, the high up here, we have the low here. Uh, we're, we're looking at the the, the uh, aggressors only right now uh, in this range. Okay, well this is pretty typical range bound activity. There's no no buyers up in this area here. There's no sellers down in this area down here, and all of the trading is taking place in the middle here. Okay, and that's how you get your single distribution. Okay, here's your profile here. Let's see, you make it a little bit better. There it is, right? So your your uh, bell shaped curved uh, uh, profile here that's that's that right makes sense uh auction market theory uh volume profile uh now what, what we want to read though is this activity here which becomes kind of uh give us a little insight well we can't make it back up here uh we we can see that uh, we're exhausting out up here we know that three or four times uh we can't make a higher high and we're already exhausting out we we even retry here again we are exhausting out we even retry here again and we're exhausting out okay we also know down here we're not exhausting out you see some sellers down here all right so uh what's going on here uh is that there's more sellers at the bottom range here uh and there's a lack of buying in here so at that point the concept is we're looking for sellers here to try to push this outer edge Okay, and 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 drop to and maybe a new trading range. All right, and we can see that's what happened. Okay, so uh, uh, putting these pieces together in here by understanding the auction. All right, and then you can come. You once you understand that concept, uh, go back in, uh, and uh, we're going to look at many different uh, other things and different variations within here. Okay, yeah, thanks, Sam. Um, uh, so. Uh, just understanding the volume pressures in here uh, is that we're just looking at two elements here best bid and offer and volume within it and that's it all right so uh, now the heat map is also going to add in here another confluence here but you, you know you can just really even stop with these two alone uh, uh, you're going to get a lot more out of the heat map uh, as well though okay but these two alone and this is kind of similar to your market delta or your footprint chart however the, the big difference uh, is your your volume delta chart is going to be aggregated data on a bar so you're going to be looking at something like this a bar of data and it, it'll show very precisely how much volume is trading there on on the bid on the offer whatever uh, but you're going to be looking at a bar you're not going to be able to read this kind of detail in in this in this auction here right because it'll be aggregated within that bar so we're understanding the highs the lows the structure here if you want to look at structure in your footprint chart your volume delta chart 
uh, you're going to have to zoom out and you're going to have to try to try to kind of figure it out because it's all aggregated within the period. Right? And this is a one minute chart here. Right? So if you if you if you're watching this closely, you're looking for sellers here to push this edge uh, and try to drop price. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's that's the read here uh, in the order flow. Now, let's take the candlestick chart off uh, and then let's add in here uh, the um, uh, uh, the heat map. OK. And, and guys, I, I'm just I'm answering Alan's question here. I mean, what we do in here is forward looking analysis and we're missing that. Um, but uh, it is a good question. Uh, and it's, it's uh, uh, you know, we'll we'll look at this and and cover it in the live market in just just a minute here. OK, now we're adding in another dimension or element here uh, that gives us even more insight. OK, uh, in fact, we can even take that off the chart or I'm sorry, the volume off the chart. Okay, and just understand the auction where the supply and the demand is in here. Okay, you can you can start to understand that as well, uh, and start to understand uh, how um, this can give you an edge. Okay, this isn't really the greatest example, but uh, uh, you know they're staying in the order book and they got filled in here on the bid. We got a little bump back up. Uh, they're in the now here on the offer. Okay, and. Uh, uh, it looks like they kind of got filled in here a little bit, but pulled as well. So they don't really want to be sellers in here. Uh, but but uh, you can see that this is where, you know, the high liquidity at the bottom of the range or bigger range is down in here. Uh, they start to pull, uh, looking for maybe these guys on the offer uh, to start to add in more at a lower level here. So more supply uh, at, a high, at a lower level in here. Uh, and then uh, you can start to look for that. Uh, to unfold uh, and uh, uh, the move to ha to tra trade back down into these areas because now there's a skew in the auction in the supply and the demand and we can read it here uh, we can this is where we put those the pieces together with the aggressor so like I said not the greatest example with the heat map here uh, but when we put that together with the aggressor you know we, we really got something much higher probability starting to understand the, the um, uh, these these three elements now on the chart and see how they're coming, they're coming down and adding more here down at this area here. All right, so uh, you get a move away from an area. Okay, and this look at the volume in here. It's the most within this range, right? Biggest spike in here, biggest dots in here. That's what it takes to move it away from a previous range. Okay, look at the order book. Now they're on the, this, on the offer down here. Okay, they're on the bid down here. Okay, so we're looking at a trading range now here. And we're going back and forth in that trading range. Again, we can see the, the um, uh, kind of exhaustion in some of these points. I don't really see, this is a little harder read, I think. Uh, some selling down here, that's not bad, but like we need to see the selling down here. Finally, you get it here and you get the quick move. Uh, but you do get the same thing, exhaustion here again. All right. Uh, but anyway, I'm digressing already here. Um, what I want to cover, though, is structure in this. And this is why it's so important. So now we're, we're going to understand the structure and the volume, as well as the heat map within this structure. Okay, and here it is. Okay, here is our structure and our break. Here is our new structure. Okay, so now in these structures, we're looking for the volume, exhaustion, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the um, where that volume is trading within that structure and the heat map uh, to give us insight to these breaks. Now, if you're trading volume profile, great. Just look for that edge here uh, and, and these, these things to align here for a, a pretty high probability um, uh, move to the outside uh, of that area. Okay, so auction market theory here uh, in smaller structures, larger structures, it doesn't matter. It's the same process, all right? So uh, anyway, um, the um, absorption indicator, uh, this is where, um, and getting back to Alan's question about, you know, starting to understand the um, uh, sweeps and the um, uh, absorption indicator. What is the absorption indicator showing us? Okay, what is absorption? Let's just start there. Absorption is um, you have limit buy orders, for example, down here on the bid and price can trade into it 
and these are the aggressive sellers market sell orders but they can't trade through it okay they completely absorb all of that selling pressure let's find an example let's go back to the current market too where, where are we going here yeah this this turned into the bigger move actually um, um, but you can see look at look at the see where we drop from here and where did we retest here okay now we're starting to find our sellers come in okay and in this move here on this structure sellers are in control from this point okay in this time frame right so uh, and they're starting to move it so let's see if they can move it down to 87 here be looking for that um uh anyway uh the absorption uh let's cover that let's try to find a good example Yeah, not a not a clean, clear example in here at, on the, on these time frames at the moment, but uh, we can go on a smaller time frame and, and check it out. I guess here isn't bad. Um, absorption? No, I can't do that. I got to find a better example for you guys. Even this this move here, this is absorption. This is this is technically correct absorption. This is technically not correct. It's it's like absorption, but we traded through this area here, so it was not completely absorbed at this price level at 88.50. There's still more selling pressure. They're able to drop it below that area here. Uh, all of these uh, bids down here, uh, they traded, as you guys can see, they're trading right into it here. Uh, into high liquidity we know that right you got the heat map right in front of us we see the, the the aggressors here the red dots with into that demand in here and here's uh, where they where they take it all and they're able to drop it a one tick lower here okay so you know technically it absorbed a lot of it but it didn't it's not technically absorption in that in that sense the classical sense uh, here uh, actually looks better um, uh, we have high liquidity in here Okay, it is transacting, uh, and buyers cannot take it through. Now, best offer goes through it, but nothing traded, right? So they were not able to break this. There is not enough buying pressure to break this area. It was absorbed by the buyers or the uh, supply on the other side, the sellers. Okay? The aggressive buyers could not trade through it. That's absorption. Now, uh, we, we have the heat map in here. Uh, that shows you absorption. Uh, that's pretty clear. Uh, but, uh, you know, we want to also look at um, uh, the um, uh, absorption indicator uh, because this can show us things that uh, the heat map um, sometimes can't. Okay, so hopefully that should show us its settings are too too small here, too large, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so here we go. So we can see uh, absorption indicator, these uh, little uh, pink squares in here. And magenta squares, 126 contracts were absorbed at this price level, and we know that. Uh, so, uh, and, and why why do I why do I say it's just uh, it's 100? I mean, I see 173 at this whole price level here. Well, that's actually correct. It's it's 173 here. In fact, let me be more accurate. Let me split out the data here. It's actually 151 was completely absorbed here uh, at this price level, uh, and. Um, uh, but uh, the absorption indicator here, why is it wait, say 126? It's because in here, uh, it's it's the absorption indicator. The way it's working is within a certain time frame, a certain amount has traded. And that's what we're looking for uh, in here. And uh, I'm looking for 20 or above. I've got it on automatic mode in here uh, because of the standard deviation of 30 minutes. Okay, if I uh, deselect automatic mode. You know, and I put in, uh, you know, an, another number in here, like one. <laughs> We're going to see it all over the place, right? Yeah, there's always, it's always going to be absorbing in areas. But uh, we can start to filter for um, uh, these with a certain number, or we can use that automatic mode in here. Okay, so now you can see these others are absorbed in here too. 
All right. So they're, they're all, and technically this is correct. It, it, within the time frame, the way this absorption indicator works, within this uh, 0 0.01 seconds, eight transactions or eight um, uh, uh, aggressors traded, okay, transacted. Uh, and, that, and that's that. So if that condition is made, plot it on the chart, okay? That's, that's how it works. Uh, and that's what absorption is. All right, so guy, now you guys know what absorption is and what exhaustion is, okay, in a little more detail. Um, I'm sorry I, I, to digress in here. This is kind of important. Um, Alan was asking about it, uh, and uh, I thought it was a good opportunity to uh, go through it uh, with you all. Um, but uh, let's get back to this current market here and see what's going on. Now, we haven't really missed too much. Uh, we were looking for a move down, down into 87 here. That's exactly what we got, okay? And it went even below it here, uh, back down to this swing here, okay. And you can see that uh, then then buyers came back in. Okay, we're still range bound in here, but let's see if we can get this trend co to continue, All right? And see if we get a, a trending market here. Uh, and uh, let's take a look at the volume and the order flow within this trending pattern here. And let me get to some more questions in here. Um, so now, again, think of the concept of what exhaustion is, is showing you, uh, Alan. This is the key. Uh, it's, there's a lack of trading, a, a lack of trading activity. So if there's a lack of trading activity, where might price go? Okay, Likely it's going to go back to where it can trade. Okay, where it previously had value, right? Think of a sale or like a or you know like a, a price uh, increase uh, in a marketplace, like a, at the you know department store. It's like yeah, you know that's that's too that's too uh, costly. I don't want to buy it, right? They'll have a markdown. And there's your sale. It'll mark price down to an area where it becomes attractive for you. Uh, and uh, 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 that's what's happening. All right. So uh, there's no one, no one really buying at that high price. It is, it is exhausting out. There is no market for it. We'll go back and revisit where that price previously was. Uh, and we know that there was previously demand there. So it should trade. Right. That's the concept. And we're talking about auction market theory in here. Okay. Very, very simple concepts, though. This is not rocket science. Now, you know, we, we were looking for maybe more sellers in here in this trend. Okay, well, that's not happening right now. Look at the buyers coming in here, right? It looks like they want to move it away from our most traded level in here. And we've broken this, this downtrend here. Okay, so if I get more buyers up here, I'm looking for the move up into 91 and a half, 91 and a quarter. Okay, so let's read this in here. Okay, buying looks pretty good. A little exhaustion there. Okay, a bit of selling coming in. Okay, they might, they may come down. Price may come down and revisit this little area here at 88. Okay, I don't really see much demand in here except down to 88. There's some exhaustion. There's some selling. Okay, but uh, buyers, buyers come back in. Okay, here we go. All right, buyers should be able to lift it up into this 91 and a quarter area here. Okay, we're getting some buyers up here. Okay, we got a little bit of wind at our back here with the heat map. Okay, pull back, more buying at a higher level, still looking for it to trade up into this liquidity here. This is where the supply is. Okay, now let's start to read the this the buying up at this area here. It's not bad. Okay, this is better. Looking for them to even trade it through this area potentially up into maybe 92 or 93. Okay, they're pulling. See them pull that liquidity here at at our 91 and a quarter. Okay, and we get more buying. So we're still we're still finding buyers. 
Okay, selling coming in immediately, but uh, uh, to me, still still looks like buyers are are in control here. So let's see if they can still push it here. Now, now we got a little bit of exhaustion there, here and here, and some sellers. They'll likely pull it down to 90, maybe a little bit lower here, 89. Okay, see how quickly we had to read that though. We we saw buyers. We saw buyers here again. Some some in here. Uh, lack of. Uh, not able to get it higher again. Uh, some sellers down in these areas here looking for them to push it. Same process, just went through it really quickly here. Okay. Now, it, it, you know, we're covering this on very low time frames. Uh, and uh, you can scalp, scalp this to, to <laughs> you know, uh, the bejesus is out of it, like uh, uh, if you're that kind of trader. But you don't have to be. Okay, you can see this stuff on much, much higher time frames uh, as well. It's the same process. All right, I, I'm very curious. You see, we just made a lower high in here. It's a little convoluted in here. It's not so clear. But uh, if we get enough sellers here around this 89-ish level, they should probably drop it. We're going to get responsive sellers to trade it right back to 87 and a half here. And that's what I'd be looking for in this scenario. Okay, and they're not having it. In fact, buyers are trying to lift it away from that area. But did we get caught up in it? No, not at all. We're looking for something to give us an edge in here that that is more highly or more likely to, to play out. Okay, so just sat on our hands in here. We didn't get what we're looking for in this area here. Okay, and this all of a sudden buying came in in here and they're trying to lift it away here. Right, and they're trying to get up to 92 and 90, 94 now, 92 and a half and 94. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Looks like they're gonna gonna get it here. Yeah, that's some nice buying in there. Right, looking for another return up here and the push, 92 and a half, 94, maybe 95. Heck, this could learn lean or you know go to a, a retest. Well, the retest to 94 here. Let's let's zoom out and let's get our our bearings again. Okay, the um, liquidity coming in here. Okay, that makes sense, right? This is the swing. They're just in front of it here. Uh, and uh, let's see if we can get enough buyers to try to trade back up into here. Previously, we were looking for sellers down here and we didn't get it. Okay, and then the move back to point of control here. All right? Makes sense though, right? Look, buyers coming in, buyers coming in. They're trying to move it away from point of control. I shouldn't say they're trying to move it away from point of control. They're just, they're telling us in here that they think it's worth more than 87. That's what we're reading in the auction, right? So we're looking for more to tell us that, that uh, they think it's worth more than 87, right? They think it's worth something like, you know, 94, 95, maybe 4,800 up here. Uh, I didn't put POC on here, Alan, um, and um, uh, yeah, the uh, yeah, I was just trying to keep, kind of keep it clean here. Uh, I just read the profiles, and I also like the the fact that I'm also reading other profiles in here. Uh, you know, zooming in, zooming out. Okay, here come our you know it, our responsive sellers in here, driving it right back down to point of control. Right. So uh, let's see if we I missed that one. I, I you know, we're looking for buyers, buyers. If Are they telling us something? Are they telling us something? Um, uh, and let's take a look at this range and go through that same process. Now, we didn't really get exhaustion up here. We got a lower high here. OK, but we didn't get exhaustion. And do we get a lot of selling in here? We got some down here. This is where they really picked it up and they, and they decided to move. You know, this is where the sellers decided to go back and try to reach back to point of control or value. Uh, and and they have, I'm sure, at this point. Um, so uh, yeah, um, and we'll see. Are, are buyers still going to support it again down here? Is this a deal, right? Is this a deal down here? Uh, other buyers in here thought so, 
right? That's why they bought. Are they going to continue to buy? Or are we going to get sellers in here to try to flip these guys out and say like, uh-oh, you know, I, I got it wrong. Uh, I want out. And then we'll get the move back down lower into, you know, lower ends of the profile or lows of the day here. Okay, we see buying support it here so far. Okay, then they got to trade back up to 90 here. This liquidity up here. Where they where these sellers dropped it here. Uh, yeah, this is recorded. Uh, so uh, you will, um, uh, and I have yesterday's recording. I just haven't uploaded it yet. So I'll look for that. Um, I'm not really sure what to do with these recordings yet. I'm just putting them in as videos and I'll put them in here um, into the chat. So it'll be in this advanced webinar chat. That's where I'll put the link. Um, but it won't be within a playlist or anything at this point. All right. Uh, stops and icebergs down here is, um, yes, this is, uh, uh, here we go, guys. Let's see if we can get our buyers now. Um, we got this, we can go over a double bottom uh, pattern in here. Uh, just understanding a retest of an area and, you know, uh, exhaustion or or maybe traps or something like this. Uh, and then move to the other side of the range and then see if they can break that other side of that range here too. It looks like they're going to, I think they're going to go for it here. Uh, let's see it and then let's see this move to 90 here. And I'm just looking for the move to 90 right now. That's it. Right? That's it. And then we'll reassess up at 90 here. Okay, I know I know this is smaller time frame stuff, but again, this works out on the higher time frame as well. Yeah, it failed. Okay, back in here. Didn't do what we wanted. Now it might it might still might might come back up here and revisit. Yep. Let's see if they can push these guys. These sellers here, they're gonna they're gonna be buyers up into ninety, maybe even higher. Again, looking for 90 here. And this is where it gets, I know, tricky, convoluted, um, and can, can drive you mad. Um, just, you know, look for that higher or likely, more likely um, or order flow play uh, and then go with it uh, and, uh, and take small losses. We're, you know, always taking small losses and trying to let the, the uh, larger, larger trades or larger opportunities run. And also take something that looks very, very likely uh, within the order flow. Uh, all right, so let me see a few more questions here. Um, so anyway, yeah, you can turn on the POC in the in the SVP column here, uh, show the POC. But uh, yeah, I, I, I thought I, I can see it already here, so I'm, I'll kind of do away with it. Uh, let's see here. So that ice and stops. We're looking at total session 70, uh, 24 to 900. Yeah. So this is, it's, this is when I opened my book map. I opened it kind of late, uh, today. So just after nine o'clock, uh, you can see in here, right? So this is, this is the, the, this is what I'm showing. Right from that point on, it's uh, in the CV. It's in like um, uh, the um, acc accumulation mode, right? So it's just buy minus sell. Uh, you can see that the axes here don't don't line up, right? So I have, but I have the conflu or the the um, relationship between stops and icebergs, which this is what I really like. I, I the the numbers obviously they matter, but I can see the spikes in here. Right. I know that this is significant uh, selling in here. I know this is significant uh, or stops here. Um, I, I know that uh, uh, significant icebergs in these areas here too. Uh, and then I have the reference or relationship between the stops and the icebergs, which I like. Okay, just shy of 90 so far. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, you, you, taking a look at this picture here, though, you know we we knew we know stop, sellers are in control here, 
they actually took control here and here as well in this whole kind of area here. So the bigger picture move is I'm looking for sellers to try to move it away from point of control at 87. All right, based on what we're seeing in this range from just after 10 o'clock. All right, so uh, yeah, if we get enough sellers here at 87, we should get the move. Bigger picture move, we and, and likely back down into what we were looking for earlier when we started the webinar here. Uh, the move down into 81 and 80 uh, down here. Let's see it. I'm looking for it. Look at, look at more here at 90, right? Looking for our big red dots in here, and they should be able to break it. First stop is this liquidity down here around 85. Okay, same, same ideas here, right? Same ideas that, uh, uh, do we make higher highs in here? No, not really. We're making, here's our, our pullback. And then we kind of made a lower high even in here, lower high even in here. Sellers down here, looking for a retest, looking for sellers down here. Offer, here's our red dots, the pulling on the bid, looking for 85. Okay, so s and is always kind of challenging. It does a rotation again and again, but that's the scenario here we're looking for, right? So looking for these sellers to push the outside edge, try to drive it away from point of control, uh, back down into here. Okay, so not, not quite ready uh, yet, but it's looking good. It's setting up nicely here. Uh, let's see, is CVP a surrogate for delta by price? Um, CVP stands for chart. So the opposite scenario is playing out here, guys. Okay, and this is likely a, a bit of a stop run in here, but uh, no, there's some icebergs in here as well that bought down here this bottom edge. See where the, the stops and icebergs can give you a lot of insight here. Um, we're looking for this to unfold, and then like here, it's like, boom, we just ran into some icebergs down here. Okay, quite a bit. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not quite a bit. It's like uh, up at 623, negative 623, and down here it is. Uh, so it's about 150. So that's that's not really a whole lot, but you know, it, it had an effect here, as you guys can see. Okay, here come our sellers again. Okay, likely we'll get the move through it. I, I think we'll get the move back down to 88 here. Um, let's see if they can just move it down to 88. And if they can get down a little further here, uh, we should get the move not just to 85. We should get a nicer, bigger move here, I think. Okay, but we, we got to see the sellers down below. Okay, if we don't and we get the buyers up above in here, and then, uh, yeah, likely they're going to push the outside edge uh, up into some of these areas up here. 94, 95, etc. So CVP is chart range volume profile. So it gives me the the um, the volume profile for this this range in here. Okay, what we're looking at, uh, and um, uh, if I move in, uh, zoom in, like now it's for this range that I'm looking at. All right now I've got it split out by aggressor. Because we've we've got both aggressors, uh, different. There's different uh, ways of looking at this. Um, many different configurations, even with just volume profile. Uh, you can see it's chart range. Okay, there's resets in here. Uh, the configuration in here, I've got it split out. Let's let's put put it back into a composite profile of buy and selling. You can also look at a delta um, buy minus sell in a profile. All right, so it's up to you. Uh, let's just look at the regular uh, small profile here, okay, and start to understand this, like a kind of uh, micro uh, volume profiles within bigger profiles. A 
Okay, just trying to catch up with the questions here. Um, okay, I hope I answered your question on CVP. Uh, and uh, I thought toss book map is the same. No, this is very different. I mean, like um, the Thinkorswim um, uh, book map version uh, looks good. Uh, I just uh, was looking at it uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, and um, the um, uh, it's DX feed data. It's not rhythmic. So you're not going to get, um, there's all sorts of things you're not going to get with that version uh, at this at this time. Uh, probably one of the biggest ones, though, is it, it's not market by order data from rhythmic. Okay, so if you want that with your futures, uh, then you're going to have to, you know, get get the uh, the bookmap uh, desktop version, okay, and download version. This is the Cadillac version. It's it's got all the you know different add-ons, etc., which allows you even deeper insight to things like just what we saw in here. We're looking for this bottom edge to break, and we see we didn't get our sellers down here that we're looking for. That's one insight. But uh, you look at the absorption with the hidden orders in here, right? And it just just spiked here on the on the uh, um, uh, the, the iceberg uh, purchases in here. Okay, it's only 150 or so, but uh, still, you know, uh, there's a reference to it uh, in this area. Uh, yeah, there was a request to look at gold quickly. Let's let's do that. Gold's dropping. You can see um, again who's in control in this area in this structure. Right. Look at the pullbacks into these areas here. Right now, is, is there any? I, I'm looking for the S and P to do this, uh, and uh, uh, it hasn't so far. But gold is doing it. Okay, so gold is now trading into uh, these lower levels. Uh, Eight ten uh, is the the figure uh, looks rather inevitable here, uh, and then to see if they can even get a bigger move, a, a bigger move like this. And pull it down to like maybe 806 or 7 down here. Right? We're looking for something like that. Anyway, that's a quick kind of outlook on gold. Now let's see if the S&P is following suit. All right. Let's see if these sellers can come back in. See the selling coming in? Bottom of the range here. Okay. They, they pulled liquidity on the bid. So it, the door is open for sellers to hit it back down to point of control here okay that's the move i'd be looking for first uh right down into here okay back down to 87. Okay, let's see. We're looking for our sellers here. Yeah, I'm looking for them. They should be able to drop it. 88, uh, 87. See, again, same ideas up in here. Exhaustion, lower high exhaustion on this end, little, little end here. And we started to see sellers come in. So we're looking for the drop. Okay, and then now this fits within the bigger picture too, All right? So not in in this essence here. Um, yeah, I'd love to be in right around here, uh, uh, and then I would be holding this one. Okay, M maybe I'll take some off at around 87 down here. Um, would be my trade management on on something like this, but I'm looking for a bigger move on this one because we, we were looking for it earlier, looking for it again. If buyers can't do it, sellers will do it down here uh, and, and looking for that move to follow through, okay? If it doesn't work, get stopped out at break even, I'd be out of it now. Look for the next one, okay? I'm not gonna have these guys run it uh, the other way and get trapped, okay? This should have worked now and it didn't. All right, so let's see here. Yeah, I mean, I you know, I see the structure in here too. Like, uh, you know, we, we've got, uh, this is, uh, 
uh, the structure that's kind of shaping up here. Uh, and, and buyers came in here, right? And they, you know, some pretty good volume was able to move it, but they were not able to break uh, this area up here, right? So we, we'd be looking for quite a bit of buying up in here and we didn't get that either. Here's, here's some exhaustion right here. Okay, are we getting sellers down below? Not quite yet. All right, here they go. All right, we should be able to get the move into 88. Let's see if they can push it now. Looking for it. They're pulling down here at 88 as well. Great. Getting some sellers down here. All right, great. They should be able to push it even further. Back to 87-ish. 87 and a half is actually point of control, right? So looking for the sellers to trade it back down to 87 and a half here. Okay, this one makes better sense, right? It looks like it's higher probability. Okay, we tried it a few times, tried it here, got stopped out, looking for it again, starting to play through, in again, looking for the move back down, take some off at uh, at point of control, move your stop down, etc. This is this that's a trading strategy, right? And it's just a consideration. Uh, it's not a recommendation. Okay, but uh, we, we always get the question about how you might manage it, how you might trade it, etc. Okay, well, there's 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 a few different ways. Okay, or maybe you're just in uh, and uh, holding. Okay, looking for the your stops way up here, right? And you're fine with that. And this is just chop for you. You know, you're, you're kind of anticipating sellers to, to pick it up at this at bottom edge here. Anyway, guys, if we take a look at the bigger picture in here, like as we mentioned when we started the webinar, it, it, it's pretty choppy. We already knew that. Um, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, we're, we still got to read the order flow in here. Uh, yesterday was a lot easier. Uh, we're looking for a trend move. And it was kind of a grinding trend, which can be kind of difficult to hold on to. Uh, but uh, you just you stay in it until you see something different. Uh, let's see here, Sam. You have a question. Does this show buying exhaustion in current range? Minimal display volume. Let's take a look. I mean, yeah. When you filter your volume like this, like uh, you're going to get a lot more kind of exhaustion areas, but. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just lack of buying here, but now you filtered it though, you know, but it's still relative though. So it still makes sense, uh, you know, that, yeah, this is basically on, and this time frame. I mean, I do see some little dots in there. It looks like if I'm maybe squinting at it, um, maybe not, but uh, yeah, I mean, like uh, trading down here, lack of trading here, trading down here again, right? Here's that retest that we just saw. Uh, and that looks like the, you know, they're, they're starting to trade back up here again. Is it going to work though? Is it going to accept, right? If we can get back down here at 87, that, this is why I'm looking at the higher time frame. Um, I, I'm looking for a, a, maybe a trend move, right? That that can trade through this area and down below, right? That's why, uh, because uh, these these little maybe uh, uh, pushes up here, eh, you know, it's still range bound basically is what it's telling us. Okay, but we have a potential move for a move away from a uh, point of control uh, down here, right? Does that make sense? You can look at the trades. Where are the trades taking place? Even if you're filtering it, right? Look who's in control. Where do the where do the sellers take it? Have we gotten back up above that area? No, we haven't. In this structure here, sellers are in control. All right, from this time frame onward. Okay, here we go. All right, let's see if we can do it. We're, we're back down at 88, looking for these sellers to come in here. And we should get a nice move here. This should be um, 
that move right back down to 85 here. Uh, and it should be pretty quick. Sellers are coming in. You know, we had sellers down here before. Uh, Sam just showed us some exhaustion on this higher time frame filtering. So, yeah, we have more likelihood of that to take place. Okay, I just don't see it yet. I just don't see it happening yet. Uh, and some of the filtering um, uh, guys uh, that that Sam's uh, doing in there. Let's let's go through that. Let me show you that how how he's doing that. I don't use it uh, because I'm always zooming in and out, and I actually like to see the pressure within the move. Uh, was it consistent? You know, I don't need to look at the big dots. I, I'm looking for these guys to drop it, guys. Like here we are at 87. We got our sellers here. They should be able to hit 85, uh, and I think we can hit 80. Basically, this could be a bigger move here. Okay, makes sense. Nice image, Sam. That helped uh, give us uh, some insight to the uh, uh, trading up in these areas here. Yeah, all right. Looking for them to press the outer edge here. Back down, 85. Uh, maybe 80. Look at that. Look at that. Here's our supply. And what's the reaction? Sellers. Right? So still looking for them to push it lower. I'm looking for a stop run on the buy side too. Well, I mean, you know, see the stop run to the downside, I should say. Um, but it's, it's buyers, you know, flipping. And they have to be sellers. Okay, more supply at a lower level here. Okay, see how they're dropping this, that supply, the offer into other areas. We're getting some sellers in here. Just looking for the follow through. Looking for sellers to take it lower. Okay, let's take a look. Zoom out. Great. Some selling down here. Now, we got to be a little careful of this little ledge here, this little area here at 86. This is a swing. Right? And uh, that's where, you, you know, you, you get these buyers trying to move it right back into, like, you know, 88 in here. Below the swing, trade it back into the range. We have some iceberg selling in here now. All right, sellers. Now we don't want to see exhaustion here on the sell side. We want to see the sellers th trade through, uh, and th and through 85 here. You see see how today is like we're not getting that. It, this convolutes the whole picture here. All right. So, uh, anyway, I mean, you could take a partial profit here, and you can move your stop. To break overall break even on the on the on the position, and it will likely be back up above point of control up here, right? If you if you got in someplace around here, you just took some profit down here at 85 and three quarters. Let's suppose you got in here at 87 and a half, right? So it'd be something like this: 87 and a half down there, okay. And move edit. So you could move your stop to some place like this up here, around 89, and you'd, it'd still be break even, right? And you're still giving this a chance to run. Okay, that's another way to consider, and it's just a consideration. It's not a recommendation, uh, a consideration here for managing your stops. Okay, because we're looking for this to follow through. 
uh, and give yourself a, a, a higher probability or better fighting chance for that to, to unfold. Uh, the grinding, I want to cover like the grinding move we saw yesterday and, and what's going on in those moves. Um, uh, you know, we were bullish uh, and we were looking for a price to go higher. Uh, and there was no reason to get out of that trade at all or out of that market. God, I should not say trade. Um, we're not trading in here. We're going through the order flow uh, and we're reading it. And then where we think price is going to go next uh, is is um, due to the reading of the order flow. That's our job. Uh, and you can wrap any kind of trading strategy around that. That's the key, right? How does this fit into your trading strategy? Uh, and then, uh, and then you know, start to study it. Um, you know, do your due, due diligence uh, and, and put those pieces together. Uh, because once you got those things together, man, you know, instead of taking a candlestick pattern chart or hitting a fib level and taking that all the time, no, that's when you start. You're going to start to look at the order flow, uh, and you're going to get more insight, and you're going to be like, "Yeah, this looks really good." You just saved yourself money by cutting out a bad trade, or confirming a good trade. Okay, and maybe you even consider layering in a little bit more. Like if it's a if it looks good, you can scale into it. All sorts of different considerations here. All right. Well, we made it down to our 85, um, and this this market is just back and forth in here. So uh, back to the most traded level again, back at 87. So yeah, I, I don't know. Um, I, I would uh, looking for that higher probability move here. Uh, you know, back down into 80 is not looking very likely now. It just seems like it's really just back and forth in here. All right. We gave it a shot. Uh, took some profit. Um, you could take the rest. You know, if you don't believe in the move, like just get out. Uh, it's not what it looks like now is it can go against us here. Right. Uh, and then and then why take a full stop? Like take take some off. Right. You can always get back in. Right. But you're looking for the higher probability or more likely um, scenario in the order flow uh, and then carrying that forward. Okay, if you if it starts to show you something different, well, then, you know, that's where you can consider uh, 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 bailing on that idea and maybe even reversing on that idea. Just be objective about it. It's hard to do that. It's hard to reverse, but uh, uh, be really objective. Look at the buying coming in here now, right? Really big buying. Okay, but it's right at point of control. Now, for them to move it away from this point of control, we, we need to see this, but we need to see it up here. Okay, so back up around this 90 or 89 level here. Uh, and then we want to see them carry it forward uh, to 91, 90, 92, or 94, etc. So anyway, kind of a ho-hum day, uh, basically. Uh, just uh, uh, we're all we're up at all-time highs, uh, and we're trying to get some follow-through in here. Ah, uh, yeah, I forgot. Um, uh, and we're not getting that follow-through, right? You, you can see the buyers flipping on the other side here. In fact, it's higher, highly likely now they'll try to trade it back to the other side of the range here. So this is a false breakdown back in the range, maybe a move right back up to 91 here. They may even be able to break 91, and then they would try to come up and test this area where it broke from up here, 95. And then maybe we'll get the move all the way back up into 4,800. It's starting right here, right here with the order flow, okay? Because this is the false breakdown and the buyer's coming in, right? So this is, it's just a different scenario, right? We're looking for the scenario to unfold, and we're looking for um, more likelihood by reading the auction. Okay, and uh, uh, the uh, the order book as well as the uh, aggressors within the within the price structure. Um, yeah, the grinding move. Uh, I just wanted to cover that. How you know, uh, it, it's kind of like this in here, a uh, very small range, but just grinding higher in here, uh, and um, you just. It can be it can be uh, kind of challenging. Uh, we know buyers are in control here and here. Okay, 
You see a little bit of exhaustion here, a little bit of selling here. So you're kind of like, eh, I'm not, I don't really know. Sellers never took it lower. The structure held. Okay, it did not go below this. Okay, it did not go below this. Uh, it came comes back up here. We see some buying in here, and it's just still grinding higher. It's a very small time frame, but it's doing that. Uh, it's when you see something else, like maybe really high. We saw it yesterday. I think it was really high liquidity on the offer that came down into around this area here. We saw some sellers, uh, and then they, they moved it here. Uh, this here, you can actually still stick with the trade, actually. Um, uh, you know, they, the sellers came in and moved it, but, you know, if we don't get sellers back down here yet again, uh, you know, this can continue on up. Uh, so, uh, uh, anyway, just uh, um, what this means in here, this kind of order flow means in here, is we're finding buyers and they're taking it higher. We're just not finding tons of buyers. But we're not. We're also not finding tons of sellers. We're just finding. We're finding less sellers. Okay, so it just grinds higher. Right, and it will just continue to. And, and buyers continue to buy at higher highs. Right, so it just continues to go, even with you know uh, not a lot of volume. Uh, you can get those kinds of moves. So st you stick with it. You understand that 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 uh, uh, buyers are taking this higher, but they're not like buying hand over fist. They're just taking it higher. Right. So understand also uh, in the in the auction uh, the um, the type of the volume uh, trading here. Look look at the move here, guys. Like uh, it's really kind of all over the map. Uh, buyers, you know, trying to take it. They're getting caught on the other side here, uh, and we're just still kind of at the edges of this like kind of uh, big uh, volume profile here. We're we're looking for those sellers to try to drive it, try to drive it away. They have the opportunity here to do it right now. Okay, the, the question is, you know, uh, are, are they going to do it? Do they, do we see this in the order flow starting to, to unfold? Yeah, they've got it here. They should be able to do it. Now, now let's see them do it. Okay, 82, 81, 80. This was the original move that we are looking for earlier, and we had to go through all of this BS, all this back and forth in here, right? We knew it was choppy, though, so, you know, that, that's okay. And look look where they came. <laughs> you, actually, you would have been in this still if you uh, had your stop at break even. You, you would have one tick, uh, you would have uh, uh, stayed in this trade here um, uh, with the higher, you know, if you managed it that way. Um on choppy days, I do not like to manage it that way at all. Uh, I like to take my profits and look for the next, take my profits, look for the next. Choppy days, I'm so tired of getting stopped out of the break even way up here on the overall position. Uh, that uh, uh, This one played out, uh, played out pretty nicely. So we're back down into our 82. And that's low of the day here, okay, for the cash cash session here. All right, let's go through just uh, one more uh, uh, question, um, and then uh, let's wrap it up. We'll call it a day here. Uh, first off, how, how can I get icebergs? Uh, how can you spot them? Well, they're, they're, um, I, it's an indicator um, with the MBO bundle, stops and icebergs. Uh, that's where you get it. It's from our bookmap marketplace. All right, so if you're interested in that, um, here, let me show you where you can go. Click on the More button. Uh, go to Marketplace here. You can go to MBO right away, right here. Okay, and you can find the information here on it. All right. Oh, you're welcome, David. Thank you. Um, uh, yeah, uh, no, always a pleasure with you guys as well. Uh, definitely en enjoy doing it. Um, uh, let, let's see here. There's one other question from Mike. Uh, let's look at the original image. Okay. 
And what is your question, Mike? How do you, you factor these sellers getting swept by buyers into the short thesis at this point? Well, okay, first off, look at structure, right? So buying buying's pretty strong, no, no doubt about that, right? Uh, were they able to break the structure, though? No. They could have. They could have retested here and then broke it uh, easily. Uh, I think they did, right? Because uh, that's quite a bit of buying in here. Right, and this is this is the battle here. It's not it's not that like you know, I mean the order flow shifts and it changes. Um, buyers and sellers are battling it out, uh, and um, you know trying to get one off size on the other side or and, and vice versa. Uh, but we just we try to go with the majority of it here. Understanding market structure is key. It's key. Like did we did we uh, uh, break this structure? No. Um, so. Um, even if they do, then we look at a bigger structure, and I think it came up into this 89 area here um, and did not get above it. Uh, so it did not break that structure. It traded back into the range in here, um, but then sellers came in and, and, and we saw the uh, 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 them move it uh, back down into lower areas. All right. But this is, yeah, this is more difficult, uh, definitely. Um, uh, on choppy days uh, or, you know, on rollover days, that kind of stuff, like uh, you have to be very selective uh, on on what you're looking at um, and what you think may uh, unfold uh, in the auction. Uh, you know, this also could have led to like a much much bigger move in here, uh, Mike. We we knew that, um, uh, but they really have to show us something, and that's what we we look at the order flow and, and like yeah they're showing us something in here, but did they show us something up here? No, they didn't. Right. And then once we get these sellers back down here, we're back to our original scenario here. So this structure here, let's go through the structure. Okay, this was not a structure, it was our stop, but it'll, it'll work. Um, uh, we have that. And then we have this structure. Now they, 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 did, they did break this one. Uh, they came back up into here, and let's look at the point of control of that little structure. They just tagged it here, okay, right there, uh, and and didn't take it higher. Okay, when the sellers start to come back down to that bottom edge again, that's when we're looking for the follow through. Okay, and a, a nice nice move into 82 down here. In fact, you can even start to look at this uh, another diagonal structure, like this. Uh, so anyway, yeah, look at look at the market structure. Um, I think that'll be really helpful uh, for you. Um, and and uh, Mike, maybe just kind of take a step back from the uh, the indicators, uh, the sweeps, and, and and trying to get so much information from those. Uh, it's really more about the uh, the structure uh, and uh, the uh, the volume uh, and, and the order book. Okay, these three things. Th those those um, uh, indicators will help you gain deeper insight. Um, to what's going on in, in, in those areas, right? But it, they're a confluence. They come like secondary or, you know, tertiary or like even, you know, further uh, down the chain, right? It, it, you you got to understand these, these three elements here. Um, the, you can get tremendous insight. We saw just unbelievable insight. I, I'm still just amazed by it, uh, guys. Like, uh, uh, or let's go back to Twitter and just show that, uh, that image. I, I'm just amazed by it. Like, um, uh, here and what kind of insight we got we were this was a, you can watch the webinar uh, from the 20th it's on our YouTube channel uh, and uh, and see the move uh, uh, and and the 34,000 icebergs uh, getting filled in this area here right that led to here we're on our fifth day of rally Uh, yeah, uh, Frank, uh, I, I've recorded these, um, both these webinars, yesterday's and today's. Um, I'll put the links in here. All right, so uh, you can take a look at them. The, um, yeah, they're, they're free and open all. And again, just like, you know, this is, 
I, I want to go through the uh, risk disclosure again uh, because uh, just so you guys understand, like, um, you know, these aren't recommendations. It's, it's reading the order flow and giving insight to where uh, price should go next. Uh, and uh, don't get caught up in trading um, uh, so much. Just understanding these moves is what's important. That's why we have exactly why we have these webinars. Uh, you want to get in, into the trading and specific trading styles. We got JTrader tomorrow around uh, 10, 15 uh, East Coast time in the morning. Uh, at 10 a.m. on Thursday, we have uh, Scott Pulsini. You'll get his very specific way of managing trades, taking trades. And it's not, again, it's not a trade copying room at all. It's it's for um, uh, learning from uh, others and something might resonate with you that you can then um, uh, integrate within your trading. Okay, so... Yeah, you got the general disclosure here, your risk disclosure, uh, all book map limited material, limited materials, information and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. The risk disclosure trading futures, equities and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right. So just, um, uh, you know, uh, take a step back. Um, uh, once we start trading, you know, take a step back and, and, and um, look at these areas, observe, um, consider some of these things, uh, and then you can start to integrate them, study them, uh, and, um, and, you know, see if this is an edge that, that works for you, right? Uh, maybe it doesn't. It's not for everybody. Uh, but uh, that's the key here. Uh, and then um, uh, And then start trading, because once you start trading, it, emotions fly. Uh, any sort of kind of a reasoning uh, is going to be lost. So it, it, you know, instead, like, hmm, you know, I see this, this, and this. I'm looking for the move to go here uh, due to these factors in the order flow and the and the structure. Uh, and uh, did it work? Why did it work? Why didn't it work? Uh, if it if it if it failed. Okay, so, you know, and then answer those questions. Come in here to these webinars, ask questions. And we'll go through it. Uh, Sam just had a, had a great question, All right? Also Mike uh, as well. So um, let's see here, a few more questions. Um, uh, uh, BP rules, um, talk, talk to Scott. Um, reach out to Scott. Uh, go to his website if if you want to talk about his, talk to him about his trade copier service. It's total hands off. It's a copier, right? You're, you're going to give him money basically, I, I believe, and and just say like, all right, you sign something, and he's going to take trades. And oh, I think I and that's not how it works. He takes trades, and then uh, you get an email or a text or something like that. And it, it's like that's what he's doing. If you want to copy it, you can do it. Something something like that. I'm not really sure how it works, right? I would be very careful with trade copier services in general. Like, you know, um, yeah, you know, if you don't have time, that's why Scott did it. If you don't have time in the market uh, to, you know, go through and read and um, uh, uh, come up with your own trading strategies uh, and edges uh, and you just want a trade copier service, then you can get that. Uh, you know, that's why he offered it. Right, because a lot of guys were saying like that's great, Scott, but like I don't have time to go through all this, you know, all your analysis and what you're looking at, etc. Uh, I only have an hour a day or whatever. Um, so uh, yeah, he he instead offered a, a, a service. All right, guys, we're back to um, the outside edge here. We're seeing sellers here. We we have order flow uh, um, supply up there at 85. Okay, let's see if the sellers can drop it again here back down to 80. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't, it looks like they're trying. Um, it's just not, it's kind of back and forth in this little tiny range here at the moment. Anyway, let's let's wrap it up, guys. It's, it's, God, we've been going um, about an hour and a half here. Uh, so let's let's call it a day uh, and uh, we'll we'll catch up tomorrow. J Trader tomorrow. I'll go over for the first 15 minutes or so 
uh, the S and P or whatever you guys want to look at, and then and then J Trader will take over with stocks. All right, all right, guys. Yeah, thanks for coming, everybody, uh, and uh, we will catch up uh, tomorrow. All right. Yep. Yeah, take care, everyone. Bye bye.